Tonight's newsmaker has among the Piedmont's heaviest loads of responsibility. 68,000 children, 10,000 employees, 12,000 acres, more than 300 buildings, and a nearly $1 billion operating budget. Dr. Whitney Oakley is about to enter her second month as the superintendent of North Carolina's third largest school system, Guilford County. But, as you're about to see, she is by no means unfamiliar with her surroundings. The Doris Henderson Newcomer School in Greensboro. Like the name implies, it serves recently arrived immigrant and refugee students in grades 3 through 12. It also holds a special place in the heart of Guilford County Superintendent Dr. Whitney Oakley. When I was in school, this was Guilford Primary School, and it was my first school experience. Yes, years ago, when the Newcomer School had the words, Guilford Primary School displayed out front, she started kindergarten in that building just before she turned five years old. What memories do you have of this particular room? This is the cafeteria, kind of an auditorium. Yeah, it is. And when I was here, this was where we did a dinosaur play. And really? I was the paleontologist, and we were on this very stage in this very space. Guilford Primary's principal at the time was Dr. Doris Henderson, after whom the newcomer school would be named, and someone who left quite the impression on a kindergartner turned superintendent with whom she reunited on the first day of school this past August. Accessibility and generosity and she never asked anyone who worked for her to do anything that she would not do. And today Dr. Oakley is working to replicate those qualities as the superintendent of the school system where it all started. But today's challenges are far different, especially coming out of the pandemic. How would you describe the severity of learning loss here in Guilford County? In terms of math instruction, it's like we went back to 1999 for nine-year-olds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow and back to 2004 in reading in terms of where we were as a country. It looks the same here. So the school system's been focusing on things like extended learning time, intensive tutoring, and even before and after school learning hubs for high school students. The system's also providing counseling and other resources for students and staff dealing with mental health challenges. 175,000 kids lost a parent or a caregiver in this country after, during or after COVID. And you're seeing that locally? We are. We are. And so families are still struggling with generational poverty that was exacerbated as a result of the pandemic. So it's pervasive. What can you say as superintendent to parents to reassure them that Guilford County schools are safe? I send my two kids to school every day, just like parents across our county, and safety is a top priority for me. What we know is that we follow the research. We meet uh, every other week with other large urban districts about what we can do. We're paying attention. We are meeting with our local law enforcement agencies regularly to team up on what the best practices are. We've done things already like have scanners at our comprehensive high schools. We've layered in safety measures um, like having clear bags at our athletic events. All of those things are transitioning and their culture changes for us. But what we know more than anything else is that building relationships and every student having a trusted adult in the building is the best safety measure we can take. Another big issue, facilities. Because of inflation and supply chain issues, the school system's already announced it needs an additional $170 million on top of a $300 million bond package for new schools and renovations voters approved in 2020. Then there's the nearly $2 billion package voters approved in May. How confident are you that that money will be enough to meet your goals? So I don't think we can pretend that as large as these bonds are, that $2 billion is going to fix decades of underfunding. I'm super grateful, as our whole community should be, to our current county commissioners who have committed to giving schools the funding that they need. But it is no secret that we, are, we went decades where we were not funded adequately for capital. 
So how much are you looking forward to making the inclement weather call? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, you know, I am, I, any decision that impacts kids is a really important decision. Yeah. And I'll go ahead and apologize, but I will never make a decision where a student's safety is put at risk, ever. And so we'll see what the weather holds. The almanac's not looking great, uh, but we got through our first hurricane okay. Being the top administrator of the third largest school district in North Carolina is not an easy job. My question is, why in the world would you even want to do this job? Yeah, I think, you know, neither is being a teacher. <laughs> And I will always consider myself a teacher. And I didn't wake up one day and say, I want to be the superintendent in Guilford County. And I'll tell you what really happened when it was, you know, I moved through different positions, all connected to teaching and learning, which is our core business here. Um, but what happened was I didn't want to leave. Dr. Oakley's first job was a teacher at Frazier Elementary School in Greensboro. She was then an assistant principal and principal in the Alamance Burlington School System. She returned to Guilford County in 2012 and has served in several administrative positions, including deputy superintendent and acting superintendent. Needless to say, she's come a long way since being the paleontologist in that dinosaur play years ago. To read more about Dr. Oakley, including her background and her thoughts on school resource officers, as well as teacher and bus driver job vacancies in the district, just look for this story, which we're about to post in the Newsmakers section of our website, myfox8.com.